My name is Laurent Mesbar. I am professor of environmental sciences. I'm going to talk about uh, biodiversity uh, challenges and opportunities for humanity. So life on Earth exists uh, since more than three billion years, and um, it evolves in all this very diverse and rich diversity of forms that we know with plants, uh, the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, but uh, it started with very, very simple forms of life, such as bacteria, plankton, viruses. So uh, we have such a beautiful uh, diversity of uh, forms of life now. And in fact, many of these forms of life uh, became a support system for other forms of life. So in other words, many of these forms of life uh, became the producers for consumers and we have what we know the food chain where uh, or we call it also the food web where everything is connected all uh, these different forms of life are connected to each other and they also connected with the non-living part of this planet with the rocks earth uh, the water so all this connection makes it extremely complex and these ecosystems are uh, what they are and we can see an example uh, with the forest ecosystem where uh, we have uh, and habitat created for uh, living organisms, uh, animals who evolved uh, into adapting to this kind of ecosystem. So we humans are, are part of this evolutionary process as we know. We are part of uh, uh, living organisms, we are one of those uh, more evolved organisms with this capacity to understand and uh, to appreciate the beauty of nature, of the world of creation. So what is our position in this? And of course we have been benefiting from this diversity of life from uh, the early time of our evolution. We've been benefiting from this. What are the benefits, of course, for survival? for food, for shelter, for all these uh, what made us become what we are, we have been able to use this diversity of life for our own benefits. And this has been for a long time since the, the beginning of the evolution of, uh, of the human species. So, uh, but now we are at, at a turning point clearly where we have been using so much of these uh, natural resources, this diversity of form of life, uh, where we can actually ask ourselves, uh, it looks like we are reaching some limits in the sense that uh, the resources we are using are not illimited and we are realizing now since the, we can say the 19th century roughly that uh, since we've been using a large quantity of these uh, uh, biodiversity resources, uh, many of them are endangered and some of them have became extinct. So what actually is uh, the question behind this? We can ask ourselves uh, what is our responsibility? Because we have the capacity, we're definitely responsible uh, for uh, the disappearance of a large number of species and in fact it's the first time in the history of humanity in the same way as with climate change that we have such an impact and, uh, at, at a level where it is actually impacting our own threatening our own life so the very uh, future of our existence is at question so as I said before, we humans have this capacity to uh, not just to understand nature and uh, the diversity of life, but we also have this capacity to appreciate its beauty. And as we know, beauty is a very relative uh, concept, perception, depending on appreciation. And uh, So when we talk among each other as in society, the definition of standard for beauty is not universally accepted. There are different appreciation of beauty depending on the culture and it can be very subjective. 
but when it look when we look at nature uh, it is universally accepted when it comes to the beauty of nature a beautiful landscape beautiful uh, tree beautiful flowers uh, beautiful animals and beautiful gardens are appreciated universally by the whole human uh, species so there's something very special about beauty and in fact if you if we think about it beauty uh, of nature has been a source of inspiration for artistic creations uh, uh, visual artistic but also musical and uh, we also have beauty uh, musical beauty in nature we can hear birds singing but we really can see beauty everywhere in nature and this is a special faculty of capacity that we humans have and so in addition to beauty as I mentioned before the capacity to understand and we have this idea of biomimicry for example where uh, humans are have this um, uh, capacity to understand what they see in nature and just try to copy it and think let's think about the first humans who uh, wanted to fly looking at birds gives an inspiration. They said why? Uh, why not trying flying and There are so many examples like this where nature is a source of inspiration for uh, uh, the creation for creativity for discovery and We find it in the non-living, but especially in the living world where ingenuity and um, creativity is amazing when you look at ev evolution, we just cannot just be only, we are just uh, amazed to look at uh, how nature can evolve. And uh, uh, recently uh, I, I saw a bird who was able to open uh, seeds from uh, a spruce tree and his beak was actually, is twisted. So he's able to open the seeds and evolution allowed him to do that and to be very specialized so evolution is also uh, a source of inspiration in terms of specialization another inspiration from nature is also uh, interaction between species within an ecosystem uh, which can be a source of inspiration also for businesses where uh, uh, species find their own niche in order to find their own food source of food they, some species specialized in such a way that they are actually not competing with other species in order to look for food. And there are so many examples that can be uh, shown in that respect. So human society, uh, the world today uh, is facing a number of uh, quite significant crises. And looking at the news we can see them, political crises, uh, government failings, failing, uh, international relations unstable, uh, we can see the financial crisis, economic crisis, there are social crisis, refugee crisis, we have the global climate change which is accelerating all these crises. So these are all accumulating and also lacking resources, fight for finite resources. We do have renewable resources but somehow um, we have not been able to learn, we still need to learn to use them in a sustainable way. So uh, our current economic system is based on uh, the paradigm of growth. It has to grow in order to improve, in order to benefit for society. But on the other hand, if we look at the, the natural world, we know that uh, resources are limited and we know that growth has its limits. So we live in a world where uh, growth is limited, at least physical growth. So maybe we can talk about spiritual growth or non-material growth, but when it comes to physical, there's a limit, there are limits to growth. And so uh, we really have to think about uh, this limit to growth and to redefine the way societies are organized and think about how we could actually go towards a sustainable path and this question is raised with global climate change the use of uh, fossil fuel non-renewable fossil fuels versus renewable uh, energy sources which include also the use of 
uh, living organism or organic uh, matter. But we need to think about uh, a sustainable approach to the use of resources for the future. And so what are the solutions? And of course, this is new, not a new question, but it's good to reflect on what are the possible solutions and in which direction do we need to go. And definitely we're thinking about sustainability. It has to be sustainable. We need to learn to, to use resources in a sustainable way. And this has to be done at the global level, so at the international level with the United Nations and uh, this its different convention. One of them is the Convention on Biodiversity. So uh, we know that the United Nations has this goal uh, to reduce um, uh, threat to biodiversity and to protect biodiversity. That's the whole aim of this convention. And unfortunately, um, we are quite far from the targets and we are uh, not going on the track in order to achieve these targets that were set at the IG uh, target uh, to for 2020. We have really to readdress these issues. But how, how can this be done at the global level? It has to be discussed at the national level and also the private sector at international and, and local level. Uh, the civil society plays an important role and of course individuals and uh, so when it comes to uh, uh, change and changing the vision then education is really important it's the key when it comes to change we know that human societies that we human species and we can be influenced very easily our brain is devised in such a way that it needs to learn very much uh, from the early stage and uh, so what do we need to, to learn? As the founder of the Baha'i faith, Baha'u'llah wrote, regard man as a mind rich in gems. Education can alone cause it to reveal its treasures and enable mankind to benefit therefrom. So reflecting on this quote uh, of Bahá'u'lláh on education, uh, we see that education is very powerful. But the question, of course, is what kind of education? And in order to reveal the treasures uh, hidden behind and the talents and capacities that children have potentially, so this is a really a very noble um, uh, concern and uh, effort to be taken in order to reveal these talent and capacities from children, uh, junior youth and youth. How do we do that? The question is how do we actually reveal this capacity? And it's not just for, the own, for their own sake, but also uh, so that uh, humanity can benefit from these uh, talents and capacities. And so, uh, what can be done is, again, to come back to biodiversity and nature. Nature and biodiversity offers uh, beautiful opportunities for uh, children and uh, youth and, and adults included to uh, learn and to uh, actually develop talents and capacities and values. Now, nature is, nature is teaching us all these uh, amazing values such as cooperation, patience, respect. These values are taught by nature. The alpinist who needs to climb up the, the summit of the mountain needs to be patient. He needs to persevere because the mountain, uh, its power and strength imposes these uh, values. And this is true for respect. It's also true for cooperation. And this is really uh, learning to cooperate humans actually were able to survive in such a difficult challenging environment with other species because we learned to cooperate this is why humans survived and became who we are because we have this capacity to cooperate and become really strong at that but if we do it consciously then we really learn to cooperate in a more efficient way so this is one of them, but there are other values that are being taught. And uh, so just to give an example, 
what is being done uh, at uh, Bloom Earth School in Sarajevo is that we we actually using the the opportunity to have land near the school and um, uh, use the garden to garden to, to work the soil to see plant growing and the children from kindergarten to high school all of them are have opportunities to take part in this activities and that also includes the work in the forest and uh, to understand to observe observe also allows you to develop a number of uh, very valuable skills observation uh, also it can be done through drawing but also uh, using tools and know how to transform uh, resources into more usable resources for humans and for example the work with the soil work with the rocks and that's with the minerals but uh, when it comes to plants and vegetables and fruits uh, it's about uh, learning how we humans have been uh, domesticating plants into crops and, and uh, fruits and vegetables and to see from seed uh, to be able to have your harvest and also collect seeds for the next year. So this, all this learning process is an opportunity uh, to, uh, to get closer to nature, to have more appreciation and it's an opportunity also uh, uh, to develop, as I said, uh, these uh, values and uh, human values that are so much needed for the future of humanity.